Come on, Ross. Miss your train. Seven o'clock, a Friday in February, and the station master begins his day. Did you finish your homework, Anne? Oh, I'll finish it before it goes to school. It's going down near zero today. It's a good thing you have young Cecil Runyons to look after the station furnace for you. Cecil's a good boy. So by the way, Dalton, Mrs. Love finished that Valentine cake. Well, I'll have to leave today if it's going to get there in time. Hey, take it easy. Uh, Is it teaching you anything down at that school down there? Well, I made the hockey team. Well, that's something. What for breakfast? Howard, I think there'll be a circus train through this week sometime. I'd rather see an aeroplane. Aeroplanes. When I started railroading, all the kids used to come down to the station to see the trains come in. Times change. Finch was snowed in first of the week. Biggest storm in the winter. Electricity was off, couldn't get through the highway to Chesterville, only seven miles away. Main Street looks better this morning. With only 400 people in town, I guess I know everyone, and everything is taking place. I'm on the town council, past president of the Board of Trade, steward in the church, member of the Volunteer Fire Brigade, and half a dozen others. It keeps me busy. Most townspeople wander into the station or call me on the phone every few days. Like Mr. Johnson, the feed merchant. They usually combine business with town gossip, politics, or a game of croconaw. At Finch, the Canadian Pacific Line crosses the New York Central, and we've got three section gangs. Finch has got a fire going. Hey, Dal. Hiya, Charlie. Pretty cold today, eh? Yes, I hope Cecil's got that fire going. Oh, I guess he will. See you in the tower later, Dal. Okay, Charlie, I'll be up. Dalton, I want to see you a minute. Come on in, Albert. Pretty cold, Dal. How cold was it this morning, Albert? Zero. Well, it's going down again, eh? Yep. Did you throw a sauce on me, Dalton? No, it didn't, Albert. Well, we should come pretty soon. It's holding us up on this job here at the diamond. When are you going to get the snow cleaned out of that yard? Well, we'll clean it out this afternoon if we can get the blower. I don't know who that is. Blake Nephew has been after a calf here for about two weeks. Finch Station. Oh, hello, Blake. Morning, Charlie. Good morning, see. Pretty cold, are they? Get up to the bowl last night in Winchester? Yeah, I had a pretty good cross, too. 860 year cross and 344 for a single. That I'd like to see. Well, I'll take you up there one of these nights. Cecil started railroading about six months ago as a lamp man. But now he can handle any job around the station. Because we have one of the few interlocking towers left in this country, I haven't done my own telegraphy since I moved to Finch. My operator, Charlie Binder, handles that from the tower. Field which I have been expecting arrived yet, Dalton? It's in the way for it's afternoon. About what time uh, do you expect it? Well, it should be in any time. Yeah. Wait for it's in the block, Dalton. Want me to help you over at the shed? 
I'll take the waybills over. Any further arrangements about our Crokinole tournament for the weekend? Uh, yes, they're playing uh, my place tonight uh, there. All right, Charlie. Wifrit's in the block there now. That's fine, that's fine. Freights pass through Finch every day, and most of them stop to pick up cheese, livestock, raw wool, and so on. They bring into town mostly machinery, hardware goods, coal, and standard products like Bill Johnson's shipment of feed. I've been railroading for 27 years now, and before I came to Finch, I'd never stayed very long in one spot. I've worked at one job or another at practically every station in the Ottawa Valley. And now I'm back in Finch, three miles from where I was born. My lunch again today. I'll have to check up on her whenever. I, oh, I thought this was just like a picnic. First, I did lunch since last fall. You didn't see Roy Rupert around any place, did you? No, I didn't, Albert. You must see him to get that blower to blow that uh, snow off of the road here and go to the freight shed. They must have run the snow plow in the middle of the night, eh? I don't know. You don't know what time it was up. Do you have a cookie, Joe? Mm -hmm. hey. They're awful big cookies. Yeah. It takes two of them to twelve of them to make a dozen. <laughs> did Charlie say we have to work tomorrow? Yeah. Well, that'll be better. We'll get more money for it, anyway. Well, Peter, you're going into that convention again this year, eh? Yes, yeah, so we're going to shadow all the way in. We meet there for three or four days. What do you fellas do at that convention anyway? Well, uh, first we get uh, renewal acquaintances, and then we discuss uh, mapping Canada from one side to the other. And Boy, Cecil would like to go in there someday. Maybe get go in with his cat and bottle milk. Well, he might be having a little entertainment on the side, but... Here's Blake, nephew. Now, Blake, that cat will be in this afternoon, don't worry. It's about time, Blake. Yeah, for me here. It's a wonder you wouldn't clean your feet off instead of uh, coming in dirty in our floor off. I have a DP family coming in here and they missed the train last night. So you think you got troubles? Look what I got from the station master in Montreal. One dressed chicken, wrapped, left untrained, two weeks ago. Please advise it located. <laughs> <laughs> you got trouble. That's trouble indeed. Here comes Mrs. Unicker. Hello, Irene. Hi, Dalton. What can I do for you? Uh, we want to go to that National Hockey League game in Montreal tonight. We want to know if there's a train out after the game. Well, as the train leaves there at 11 o'clock and gets into Chesterville at 12.46, it doesn't stop here. Can Ellery meet you up there? Oh, yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just fine. We'll pick up the tickets this afternoon. Thanks very much. Okay. All right, go, Peter, go. I'll see you on the afternoon train. All right, I'll see you. Look, Henry. Why don't you fix this road up here? You're a member of the town council. Listen, we've had to hop on the town blower here for the last two days, and we just can't keep up to it. We'll get better equipment. Finch Station. Oh, hello, Mrs. Love. She wants to send a Valentine cake in the shape of a heart to her shut-in friend in Montreal. She wants to know if we're going to break it up or if uh, we're delivered in one piece. All right, Mrs. Love, you bring it down this afternoon. We'll fix it up. 1001 ordered for 
2 p.m. All passenger trains on time. Thank you very much, Ben. What time does that train come in tonight, Dalton? 5.10, Blake. Hello, Charlie. Hey, Blake. Here's that moon lineup, Dalton. Well, Charlie, I guess you're soon going to be out of a job. See, you're working pretty hard in that practice set. Yeah, we had a session last night at it there up in the tower. Well, I guess the road master's coming. We better get going. The assistant roadmaster, Charlie Young, comes by every day about this time. He patrols the track between Monklands and Smith Falls. Up one day, back down the next. Here comes 9.15 now. He's late. trouble to the south. Another snowstorm and a big tie-up at Cornwall near the border. The plow went through late last night and this is the first train. Lunch is over and it's back to work. By five o'clock it's getting dark. Albert and the section gangs are through for the day. In the basement, Cecil is building a fire for the night. And a handful of people are waiting for the 5.15 to Montreal. All trains are back on schedule. There's your ticket. Hope you have a All good right. time. Uh, thanks very much. Well, hello, Mrs. Love. Hello, Lord Dalton. Here's this cake. Was oh, that the Valentine cake? Well, this is it. Well, would you take it around to the side door there and Cecil look after it for you? Are you sure it'll get there all right? Oh, yes. I'll look after it personally. How do you do, Mr. Henry? Why, hello, uh, Mrs. Abraham. Would you look after this letter for me, please? Oh, why, sure, but would you mind uh, dropping it in the letter box around at the side? No, I'd sooner you give it to the gentleman on the train personally, if you don't mind. Well, okay. I'll look after it for Thank you. Thank you. I passed on Mrs. Love's instructions with that Valentine cake. And Cecil looked after Mrs. Abraham's letter. Some strangers got off the train while Peter Shaver and the others were climbing on board. It must be the new family coming to work on Blake Nephew's farm. Close up. Well, the wife will be getting supper ready as soon as she hears that train whistle. 